Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to determine the charge, the voltage, and the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel. Now, this is the circuit we're going to use, and I'm going to go through all of this one step at a time, and these rules and these calculations all apply regardless of how many capacitors we have in parallel. Typically, it's shown as three capacitors, but whether we have one, two, three, four, five, or many more, we apply the same rules and the calculations in <clears throat> the same way. And I'm going to go through and we're going to do five different things in this video. First of all, we're going to figure out, which is very obvious, or say what the total voltage gain is in this circuit. Then we're going to get the total or the equivalent capacitance, okay? Total equivalent, that's the same thing to me. The total capacitance of the circuit and then we're going to get the total charge stored in the circuit. Those are our three totals, the total voltage, the total capacitance, and the total charge. And then after that, we're going to get the voltage, a drop, or the change in potential, electric potential, in, across each capacitor. And then we're going to get the charge that is stored on each capacitor. Okay, those are the five things we're going to do. We're going to do all that, and hopefully it'll be less than 10 minutes. Okay, the total voltage gain. That should be relatively straightforward. We have one battery over here. We have a 12 volt battery, and we just have the total voltage is 12 volts. Okay, so that's not that hard. Number two, the total capacitance. What is the total or the equivalent capacitance? Same thing, equivalent total capacitance for this circuit. Well, we have three capacitors, one, two, and three, a 12 farad, a six, and a five farad capacitor, and they are hooked up in parallel. And it is very easy because the rule or the equation is the total capacitance, or once again, the equivalent capacitance is equal to the capacitance of the first one plus the capacitance of the second plus the capacitor, capacitance of the third capacitor. All you do is add them up. So that's 12, 6, and 5 farads, add them up, and you get that the equivalent capacitance, the total capacitance, is 23 farads. All right? Okay, next. What is the total amount of charge that is stored on this circuit? Now, we could go through and figure out the charge on this one, plus the charge on the second, plus the charge on the third, and then add them up and get the total, and we're actually going to do that later. But first of all, we can easily get the total charge by using our capacitor equation. Q equals C times V. And since we want to figure out the total charge, we have to use the total capacitance, or the equivalent capacitance, and the total voltage. All right? And we can do it all in one step. And so that means that the total charge is equal to 23 farads, which we got over here, times 12 volts, which we got from our battery. Okay, total, total capacitance, total voltage, multiply them together, you get 276 coulombs of charge. All right, so that is how we did the first three, the total voltage, the total capacitance, and the total charge. Those are our three totals. Now we can go through next and we can figure out what the potential difference is across each capacitor. Now, this is also relatively easy because these are capacitors in parallel, and the rule is that the total voltage increase, or let's just say it this way, the potential difference across each of the capacitors is equal to the voltage of the battery. Voltage total, voltage battery, 12 volt battery. This is 12 volt. That means these are all 12 volts. The potential difference is 12 volts because all of these are connected in parallel and they're connected right directly to the battery. There's nothing really between this capacitor and its connection to the battery. There's nothing between capacitor number three and its connection to the battery that's going to use any of the energy between it and the battery. Each capacitor gets the full power of the battery, so to speak, or the full energy. So the voltage drop, the potential difference across number one is equal to the voltage of the battery, which is 12 volts. Number two, same thing. Number three, 
the voltage drop, the potential difference across capacitor number three is equal to the voltage of the battery, which is equal to 12. So they're all the same, okay? You don't add them up or split them in three or whatever. Each capacitor has the same potential difference as the battery, 12 volts. That's it. Okay, now this is where we're gonna figure out the charge that is stored on each capacitor. We figured out earlier that the total charge is 276. So when we figure out the total, and we said that the equation or the rule is that the total charge is equal to the charge on the first one plus the charge on the second capacitor plus the charge on the third. So we figure out or we calculate the charge on each one individually. They better all add up to 276. So let's do number one and we're going to use our capacitor equation. Q equals the charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. All right. If we're going to get the charge on one, we have to use the capacitance on number one, or the capacitance of number one, and the potential difference across number one. The capacitance is 12. The previous slide, we figured out that the voltage difference, the potential difference across each of them is 12. All right? So in this case, we have 12 times 12, which is 144. We do the same thing for number two. We use the capacitance of number two. We use the potential difference of number two, and we get 72 coulomb. Then for number three, we're going to use the capacitance of number three, the potential difference across number three, and we get five farads times 12 volts is equal to 60 coulomb. Okay, now as I said, we now have the charge that is stored on each of the individual capacitors. The rule says that the total charge is equal to the sum of the charges on each capacitor. So if we add all these up, they better add up to 276, and they do. And they add up to the total charge, excuse me, they match the total charge, which we calculated earlier on the very first slide, and therefore we have a nice warm fluid inside that we did that correctly. Okay? So that is it. First we got the total voltage, then we got the equivalent capacitance, or the total capacitance, then we got the total charge, then we got the voltage, the potential difference across each capacitor, and then we got the charge stored on each capacitor, and we did the whole thing. I think we might have even have done that in under 10 minutes. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, leave me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.